As always, we are very, very interactive. You are part of the conversation that we have here on Ghana Tonight. Let's hear from you. The hashtag is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and Twitter. Let's get talking. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. Parliament has approved a total of $710 million in five loan agreements at an emergency sitting. Despite resistance from the minority, the NPP majority and peace pushed through to have the loans approved for expense by the executive. We are currently between 98 to 103 percent of debt to GDP ratio of borrowing to the level of 576 billion to 600 billion Ghana. If the argument is that Parliament should be positioned to be able to trace and track the best of the amounts, that is our responsibility. President Kufuado has implored the Japanese Prime Minister to convince the IMF to grant the $3 billion for Ghana. He is confident the input of the Japanese Prime Minister will facilitate the deal without delay. He was speaking during a Ketsi call by the Japanese Prime Minister in Accra. Ghana is also counting on the support of Japan in reaching a favorable agreement with the International Monetary Fund, which will pave the way for the robust recovery of Ghana's economy. An economist at the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Lord Mensah, says the May timeline for a deal with the International Monetary Fund is not feasible. He knows the earliest will be after the media budget review. President Kufuado at this year's May Day Parade noted the board approval for an IMF bailout after completing the necessary requirements is imminent. There are several investors in the investor community within the zero bond. And so for me, negotiating with you know this creditors in a diverse manner is going to be difficult. A former president and NDC flag bearer hopeful, John Dramani Mahama, says a future NDC government will conduct an investigation into allegations of military killing in Boko over the raging conflict. He gave the assurance on his campaign tour of the Upper East region ahead of the party's presidential primaries. I wish to condemn the killing of innocent citizens by our military. Our military is supposed to protect us. We pay taxes to give them those weapons. And they're supposed to use the weapons to protect us, not to kill us. And so when we come, we'd like to find out what caused the death of those people. Ghana appears to be losing in the fight against illegal mining. At a media briefing, Chief Executive Officer of the Forestry Commission, John Alote, noted that the Commission's tax force does not have the capacity to defeat cartels operating in 34 out of the over 200 forest reserves where the illegality continues. We can give you the statistics of the number of our workers who have been attacked um, uh, due to uh, the uh, sophistication and then um, uh, better uh, you know, power and capacity of the illegal uh, operators in this area. The Ketsu called the president discussed mutual cooperation and bilateral ties. Other issues also centered on assisting Ghana to set its economy on sound footing. Currently, Ghana is before the IMF for a $3 billion bailout. The president asked the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida to put in a word with the IMF. Ghana is also counting on the support of Japan in reaching a favorable agreement with the International Monetary Fund which will pave the way for the robust recovery of Ghana's economy. We've had to go to the fund for assistance in order to help repair our public finances and restore our balance of payments in the short term, whilst we continue to work on the medium to long term structural changes that are the core of our goal of building a resilient, robust Ghanaian economy and building a Ghana beyond aid. He again asked the Japanese Prime Minister to consider investment in the mineral sector. Did I have made it known to Prime Minister Kishida that Ghana is endowed with abundant natural resources, 
which my government is seeking to use as a basis to transform its economy from the current reliance on the export of raw materials into a value-adding one, with the vision of taking Ghana out of dependence on aid to a self-reliant economy. Now you heard the president asking for help from the Japanese so we can get an IMF program. Because, uh, stay with me, I'll tell you why uh, all these timelines for the IMF programs over the period have been missed and why some analysts and indeed economists, the academia, who are looking into the crystal ball of this IMF program are doubting that we may get an IMF program by the end of the month of May, which is the new timeline after the spring meetings last month. But we are the IMF because of a number of reasons, including the excessive borrowing that has led us to this point. In fact, the March 2023 Bank of Ghana economic and, and financial data report showed that Ghana's total debt stock as a ending of November 2022, and this is the data we got from the Bank of Ghana, is under 575 billion CDs. That was about 93.5% of Ghana's GDP. But obviously, all things being equal, it's higher than the 575 because this was at November 2022, okay? That is 575 billion. A number of things have happened. Let's assume that even if government hasn't taken uh, any loan, let's assume, this figure would have still gone up because we have an external debt component part of this 575 billion, which is in dollar terms. So depending on the performance of the CD against the dollar, we have the debts going up. As we've seen that the CD depreciate against the dollars a bit over the period, this figure will go up. That's about 93.5% of our GDP. And take note of these figures. In fact, some analysts have stated that the current debt restructuring by government will impact on the debt numbers by the end of this year, 2023. The IMF itself is projecting that Ghana's debt to GDP, the ratio will increase further to 98.7% by the end of 2023. And this was captured in the Fiscal Outlook Report, which was released at the annual IMF World Bank Spring Meetings last month in Washington, D.C. The IMF in that same report is also forecasting the debt-to-GDP ratio to reduce to 92.8% in 2024. And the underlying condition here is all things being equal. This is what's going to happen in 2024 all things being equal. And it's subject to a lot of reviews over the period. And we've seen what the IMF does with some of these figures because they put out these forecasts and sometimes governments want on the borrowing tends to increase some of these projections. But by end of year, they are projecting 98.7%. You should be concerned about this and I'll tell you why. Today, parliament was recalled from recess to come and approve five loan agreements totaling $710 million. That is adding on to the debt stock that we have as a country. And reminder, you and I are carrying the burden of this debt. And many of you have said that you could calculate the debt of a particular government, charge them with it so that they all pay for it before they get out of office. Well, it is about the accountability of what these monies that are taking as loans are useful. So today we went to Parliament, we got the details of these debts. This is what you see. This was what was approved by the representatives of the people, at least the majority, the majority side of Parliament. Because what we learned, so finance primary health care investment project, $150 million. And then the financing of the Ghana Digital Acceleration project, $200 million. That's, that's still an agreement. The third additional financing for the Ghana COVID-19 Emergency Preparedness and Response Project. COVID found its way there as well. $60.6 .6 million. We're still taking loans in the name of, of, of COVID-19. And we'll get an explanation why. So stay with me. Financing of the West African Food System Resilience Program, Phase 2, $150 million. 
financing of a public financial management for service delivery program, $150 million. That's about $710 million that we should all be concerned about. And I give you the details of what this, these loans we are contracting or government is contracting in our name is going to be used for. Okay. Questions have been raised about the justification for this, but bear in mind the parliament approved this earlier today. Stay with me. Coming up, right after this quick break, we have the minority leader, Dr. Kesel Atoforsing. He sat with me on Ghana Tonight.